Hey everyone, it's your girl Layla. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I am going to be doing another MMIW case. So if you guys are unfamiliar with this series on my channel, I have a whole playlist on true crime and specifically MMIW cases in Canada. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering the case of Leah Anderson. If you guys are not already subscribed, please go ahead, click the subscribe button below. I upload three times a week, Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. So let's go ahead and get started on this case. So Leah Anderson was a 15 year old girl that went missing from God's Lake Narrows, Manitoba. Unlike most of the cases that I've covered on this channel, Leah's case is a little bit different because they found her body quite soon after she was murdered. This case is not only frustrating because it should have been solved, it should have been very, very solvable and you guys will understand why when I get into the video. The fact that it's been six years now and they still haven't solved this case makes this even more frustrating than it already is. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Leah Anderson was just 15 years old when she went missing from God's Lake Narrows, Manitoba. Leah and her siblings had a pretty rough life. Their father, Gilbert Duke, was murdered in 2003 and their mother, Sally Anderson, had struggled with addiction issues. At the time, the family lived in Thompson, Manitoba and with Sally's addiction issues, this led her children to be put into the foster care system. The kids fluttered between 13 foster homes when finally their Aunt Myrna and Uncle Wayne were finally able to adopt the children and take them into their home on God's Lake Narrows. God's Lake Narrows is a Cree First Nations reserve and has a population of only 1,300 people. It's only accessible in the wintertime via ice road or by air. And this is what makes the case so frustrating is because there is so limited access to this community. Leah was very involved in her community and was even youth chief. This means that she knew most of the people in her community because it was so small and tight knit. Leah was very artistic. She loved dancing, skating and singing and she had dreams of one day attending the University of Manitoba. On January 4th, 2013, at approximately 7.30 p.m., Leah would see her family for the very last time. She had plans to go skating, however, her friends that were supposed to go skating with her had canceled last minute, but she decided to venture out alone anyways, and with it being such a small, tight-knit community, I bet you Leah didn't feel unsafe whatsoever. Her uncle reminded her to return home before curfew. Now, what's interesting about this night is her friend had actually come by only just a few minutes after Leah left the house, but she had just missed her. That night, Leah did not return home. However, her aunt and uncle didn't initially panic because they thought that maybe she had crashed over at a friend's house and she would be back later on in the day. However, once that day passed and she did not return well into the next day, her family had started to worry about her. They even found other members of the community to help them look for Leah. On January 6, 2013, two days after Leah went missing, at approximately 10.30 in the morning, it was reported that a body was found near a snowmobile trail and the police had confirmed it was indeed Leah because she was the only person in the community that was missing at that point in time. Initially, when they found her body, they suspected that she was mauled by dogs because it was so badly disfigured. However, upon further investigation, her death was ruled a homicide and she was beaten to death. She also had various defensive scars, so she was definitely trying to fight back her attacker. It was believed she died before 10 o'clock p.m. on January 4th, the night that she left her house to go skating alone. Probably the most frustrating part about this case is during the weekend that Leah had ventured out, the ice road into the community was closed. 
so the only way into the community on this weekend would have been by air or by snowmobile. Now God's Lake Narrows is a legally dry community which means that alcohol is prohibited. There's no sales of alcohol and residents cannot consume alcohol legally in the community. However, alcohol is frequently trafficked in via the snowmobile trail. And why this is so frustrating is because there's only 1,300 people that live there. There's only 285 homes in the community of God's Lake Narrows. There was no way in or out of the community except for by air or by snowmobile. That's what makes the whole thing so frustrating because it should have been just an open and shut, super easy case to solve, but it wasn't. A few days after Leah's body was located and RCMP flew in to do the investigation, they left and only returned sporadically since then. Leah's family believes that whoever killed Leah came from outside of the community and likely accessed God's Lake Narrows via the snowmobile trail. However, Leah's sisters once interviewed said that they don't feel safe walking around God's Lake Narrows, especially alone, and they believe that the killer still lives there today. Just some people have to watch out for. Not watch out for, but like suspects that I heard of. It was different. It wasn't so lonely and so scary now. Like I said, I can't trust it no more. Even just, even if it's just a little little walk by myself, I won't go alone. Not at nighttime either. Shortly after Leah's body was found, they did a toxicology exam on her and discovered that she had 0% drug alcohol level and 0% drugs in her system at the time of death. Now, with it being such a small and tight-knit community, rumors spread about Leah and how the night that she disappeared, she actually didn't go skating, but she went to a house party instead, which is somewhat interesting because she did have her skates with her and her skates were with her at the time they found her body. So either she went skating and later attended a house party or she intended to go out and go skating, but she ended up at a house party instead. The party was supposedly hosted by Josephine B. Josephine, to this day, denies that Leah had ever gone to her party. However, Leah's boyfriend at the time was looking for her that night and was unable to attend the party because it was all girls only. They said that she was there at the arena that night. She was she at the party. Party. They're saying they saw Leah there. The four, this girl went to go burn her mattress. I heard, yeah, I guess they went for that walk. I didn't even know who she was. She, I heard she was just a little girl. Another rumor that was confirmed by Destiny, who is Leah's sister, had stated that her boyfriend's cousin, which was also Josephine's brother, Stephen, had gone drinking with some friends and stated that he had killed somebody and that he was going to be put away for a long time. And when asked to elaborate this, Stephen didn't give a name to whom he killed, but he said that he had murdered somebody while drunk. And I mean, this is questionable because I feel like drunk people always tell the truth for the most part. Whenever you're drunk, you're more vulnerable to be telling people the truth. You don't normally put out a lie so, I don't know, so out there, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like if you've actually murdered somebody, you're more likely to admit to it while you're drunk. However, police did look into this. They interviewed Steven, they took some DNA samples from Steven, and they also gave Steven a lie detector test in which he passed. And he had also come forward with saying that he had dated Leah previously and that their relationship was a secret. Another interesting thing about this is the morning they found Leah's body, Stephen had actually messaged Leah on Facebook asking her not to tell anyone that they had been dating previously. That's a little strange. That's a little suspect if you ask me. And I feel like not all lie detector tests are accurate. They're just not. They're not a good way to tell if somebody's innocent or if they're guilty because some people that are completely innocent fail lie detector tests. Some people that are completely guilty pass lie detector tests. Not saying that Steven is guilty in this at all. I'm just saying that it's not impossible to pass a lie detector test, which he did. Um, drinking together, then 
he just said said that out of nowhere and like I already murdered somebody. What did you say? So, then I pretended to laugh and I looked at him and I said, who did you murder? Then he told me, you don't have to worry about it. We heard today that you said at a party when you were drunk that you had murdered somebody and that you were going to hell. Oh uh, yeah, yeah that's what I said. Is it true? No, I was just fucking around. Why do you think they're blaming you? Because um, cause I messaged her, I said, I told her. I hope you didn't tell on this. I just my messenger that and it was seen by uh, one of her family members. Right on Saturday morning, I messaged her. Why did you do that? I said. Why did you message her? Oh, because um, I didn't want her to tell nobody, her family. How come? About us. I don't know. I just didn't want to. <laughs> Stephen, were you involved with Leah's death? No. But we'll get back to Stephen later on in the video in the theories. The RCMP during their investigation had taken DNA samples from a lot of male individuals from the community, some of them voluntarily giving up their DNA, Stephen included in this, hoping that this would clear his name because there was DNA found on Leah's body and this matched a male DNA profile. So far to this date, RCMP have not updated the public on whether or not they found a DNA match or not. But I'm just gonna assume that they still haven't found a DNA match. So like in the States, if you get arrested, they will like run your DNA to missing people in the area sometimes, that type of thing. And I feel like they haven't really done that here with this case. Otherwise, maybe the person hasn't been arrested in the past six years or anything like that for the police to match up the DNA results. But yeah, they haven't released any further information regarding the DNA that was found on Leah at the time. So in 2017, a 23 year old male from the community was arrested in connection with Leah's death. However, the following day, this male individual was released by RCMP. It is unclear who this was. They didn't give any names. It is unclear if they tested this person's DNA to the DNA that was found on Leah and it didn't match. And it is unclear if they even took this individual's DNA at all. RCMP confirms that this person still remains a suspect in Leah's case. I, I don't know if it's because they didn't have enough evidence to hold him in jail, if they didn't have enough evidence, but they had DNA on Leah, right? So like, I, I don't know the details of this arrest and why this person was released and why they were unable to hold this person, but that was basically one of the last big events in this case and that was back in 2017. The police state that whoever killed Leah likely knew who she was and that they were likely an individual from this community. The RCMP also stated that they had interviewed 270 people regarding Leah's case and Leah's family has not received any updates, which is super frustrating. The only time that they do receive updates is when they call the RCMP and the RCMP tell them that they are continually trying to investigate this case. It is open and it is active. There is currently an $11,000 reward. If this case to you isn't frustrating, at all like I don't I don't know because to me it's just very very frustrating I feel like it should have just been such an easy case to solve considering that the road into the community the night that Leah went missing was shut down the only way to God's Lake Narrows was by plane or by snowmobile and I feel like it's likely that the person did not fly into the community they were likely on snowmobile. However, the RCMP did mention that the person likely knew Leah and that he was part of the community. So the first question I have is, was it Steven? Steven did pass the lie detector test, but did evidence clear him? Did the DNA evidence clear his name? We don't know that. Was Steven the 23 year old male that was arrested in 2017 on suspicion that he did commit this murder, but he was released? What? made the police release this person. Was it Steven? Was it someone else in the community that they have not looked into yet? Yes, the police did 270 interviews on this case, but did they miss someone perhaps? Was it a random attack by someone in the community that was maybe 
drunk or high that night and just found Leah walking alone and wanted to attack her. My next theory is, was it someone else that doesn't actually live in God's Lake Narrows, but came in via snowmobile that night, saw Leah walking alone, and this was a crime of opportunity. And then this person went back to wherever they came from. I'm not familiar with the area of God's Lake Narrows. I heard that Northern Manitoba is just very sparse and that communities are very, very far away from each other. Did the person park their pickup or car somewhere else and take a snowmobile into the community, commit this crime and then immediately leave? Is that what happened? Was it maybe Steven and someone else outside of the community? Maybe two people? You see what I mean? Maybe like the DNA evidence cleared Steven, but maybe it was another person helping him. I don't know. Steven seems just very suspicious in this case. I know that watching the interview of him and the news reporter from CBC talking about this case, he completely denies that he had anything to do with it. But yeah, the whole drunken confession thing, makes him very suspicious to me and if the dna doesn't match steven which i'm sure the rcmp have to have looked into that i mean they did take a dna sample for him i guess if it didn't match did he have help possibly was he connected in some way but he had help committing the crime and whoever helped him that was their DNA on Leah's body. There's someone out there that knows something about this case and this person, if you think about how brutal this murder was, the police had initially thought that Leah had been attacked and mauled by dogs or wolves. Her body was so badly beat up that's what killed her. So there is a person out there that is a very violent killer that's walking free somewhere whether it be in God's Lake Narrows itself with its small population of 1,300 people. Can you imagine living in a town with only 1,300 people and there's one person that is a violent killer? Does he live in God's Lake Narrows? Is he somewhere else outside of the community? Someone definitely knows something about this case and the fact that it's been six years since this has happened, Leah was only 15 years old. She was 15 years old. She would have been 20 one today would she have ever fulfilled her dream of going to the university of manitoba would she have done something crazy and amazing with her life it's sad to think about that but i really hope that one day this case will be solved i know that it's only been six years and there's been other cases out there that have gone on way longer and that have been solved eventually and the fact that there is dna evidence on leah's body that matches a male dna profile and i really do hope one day they find a match to this dna profile so yeah that is pretty much it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys learned something new about this case i was gonna do another highway of tears case actually just because there's so many of them to cover and i find them super interesting however when i first heard about this leah anderson case i never heard of it until this year until recently when i heard of this case i was like i need I need to make a video on this. So if you guys have any case suggestions you want me to do a case on, please let me know in the comments below or send me an email. My email address is in the description box below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like and share this video if you care, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.